Hi, I'm Broderick Brown from FightSomeLords.com. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about lost in loans. Uh, this typically comes up in all cases involving a plaintiff, whether it be a personal injury, a tenant's rights case, an employment case, a class action case. And so it's a frequent question and I just wanted to give my opinion on it. Um, and so in essence what happens is, is that there'll be these loan companies that'll advertise and they will in fact advance uh, plaintiffs money based upon their settlement. So the process, uh, the process is essentially this. So, uh, a plaintiff or a client contacts the loan company, the loan company contacts the attorney. When the loan company contacts the attorney, they're usually asking us a bunch of questions about the case so that they can assess the value of the case internally. And then they'll also ask for our input, our input on the estimated value, the estimated risk in terms of liability. And then they'll go back to the client and they'll let the client know uh, the amount that they can loan them. Typically, I always advise against these loans because while they're willing to advance you money to, um, to maybe pay for something that came up unexpectedly, you're gonna pay a heavy price. Uh, the APRs, which is like the interest rate, I've seen as high as 54%, 54.5%. And then on top of that, they will fee you to death. There'll be all these incremental fees, um, funding the settlement, uh, case updates, they're, they're adding all these fees onto the principal. And so at the end of the day, I've rarely ever seen a client benefit from these loans. And the other reality is, is that the legal process takes a long time. And so depending on where you are in your case, it may not make sense to take a loan in month three of your case when your case may go on for two years, right? So just in my firm, 40% of my cases are longer than a year. And so um, clients that have cases that go on years long and you have a 54.5 APR, you're gonna end up paying significantly more than what you received. And a lot of times people don't read through the contracts. And so you don't really know what you're signing up for. And so one thing to keep in mind is, is that if you do need, so this is the only scenario where I think it may be beneficial is things come up and someone may have an unexpected bill and that's not a reoccurring payment. By reoccurring payment, I mean rent, cell phone, um, cable bill, whatever, a bill that's going to be there every month. So if you have an, is an unexpected issue with your car and you need your car to go to work, and your attorney tells you that he expects uh, the settlement to happen, you know, within the next 60 to 90 days, or you're already in litigation and um, you've, you're going to mediation or a settlement conference, or in fact, you've already settled your case, but you're waiting for the payment to be processed, then it may be worth it to do a, a short term loan to pay basically an emergency that's not gonna be there the next month. In those circumstances, it may make sense. You're paying a heavy price, but, but people need their cars to get to work so that you can continue to pay your other bills. In that scenario, it may make sense. But for most, for most clients, um, there's no guarantee that when your case is ready to settle, the insurance company or the defendant, whether it's an employer or a landlord, are going to pay a reasonable sum. And so if they attempt to lowball you, you're in a situation where um, you're going to have to fight it in litigation, and that's fine, but that 54.5% is compounding, sometimes daily, but often monthly, and then you might have got a thousand at the end, and and at, at the end of your case, you're paying thousands back to this loan company. And so it's something to think about. I recommend against it unless it 
is unless you know, unless your attorney tells you that you expect to get a settlement in very short order and you know ahead going into it that look, I'm gonna get a thousand dollars, but at the end of my case, I'm gonna have to pay, basically pay eighteen hundred dollars. I can live with that. That's fine. But um, a lot of times, I see at the end of the cases, these settlement companies are taking just as much as my clients are, depending on what the value is. And so it's something to consider. Um, and it's something. It, like if you have a case or if your family member has a case, it's something that they should talk to their attorney about. Two things to keep in mind is that some companies will negotiate on the APR. So when you're talking to them, you want to know what is the interest rate that I'm being charged. And so you want to know that so that maybe they're willing to reduce it. So keep in mind, um, right now, home loans are low three percent high two um you can get a car loan probably for less credit card uh apr is 15 to 20 percent depending on your credit um, sometimes even higher than that so this is essentially double a credit card and so um so that's the first thing to consider is is that you can try to attempt to negotiate up front the interest rate uh, and try to reduce that. The second thing is that you want to find out if it's a recourse or a non-recourse loan. Um, essentially what that means is that if you lose the case then then they won't have the ability to get money back from you. And so um, otherwise you can end, if you lose the case you still may owe them money. And so one of the justifications for them charging you a higher interest rate, 54.5%, is, is that if, if, they, if you and your attorney lose the case, they don't get paid either. So, so they're taking a risk. So that's two, th that's two things to consider. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments, uh, put them in the page. But, you know, my, but my general thoughts are that people should avoid them. Um, they're similar to payday loans. You try to avoid payday loans um, if you can, but um, that's my thoughts on the topic. Uh, like and subscribe if you want more content. Um, if you want well, my thoughts or something else, uh, just comment uh, in the comments. I try to respond to all my comments. Thank you. Have a good day.